All right, everyone, welcome back, and it's time to go balls deep. And today is another things you did not know video. Now, if you didn't know, this is a series on the channel where we cover facts and information in a detailed manner about our favorite characters from anime. We have covered almost every single Naruto character at this point. So if you like this content, check out the playlist in the pinned comment and description. This time round, we are covering the GOAT. Yes, the greatest of all time. I said it, Madara Uchiha. So as always, let's begin with his name, shall we? Well, the name Madara means many things such as speckled, impure, or blemish. Madara's name is written in katakana, which is used for onomatopoeia, words that are spelled how it sounds. For example, sizzle, that is describing a sound, right? So as we all know, Kijimoto puts a lot of emphasis in the names of his characters. Madara is no different as the word blemish, impure, or speckled have a deeper meaning. In addition to the fact that there was a manga titled Madara that ran from 1987 to 1994, which seems to be one of Kijimoto's inspirations. Speckled makes sense because it is a reference to Madara's Sharingan and it evolving to the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan, the first of the Uchiha clan. The word impure makes sense since Madara was the leader of the Uchiha clan. And as we all know, the rumor was that Madara murdered his brother in order to obtain his eyes. But as we know that that story isn't really true, but this still caused conflict within the clan as they had disdain for him and wanted to get rid of him. In fact, Madara was was seen as impure to everyone. That is why they were so against him becoming the first Hokage. Madara's name meaning blemish basically says that Madara is the forgotten leader of Konoha. He was the embarrassment of the Ushia clan who only wanted peace. The word blemish translates into imperfect and this is the chip on Madara's shoulder from the very start. This is what caused his decision to come back and create peace his own way through the infinite Tsukiyomi. Now you're probably wondering, Holy shit, did that guy, did this guy just say all that just from his name? Yes, I did. I'm going balls deep, fam. So let's continue to his design and concept. So as always, let's cover the initial concept of Madara and how Kijimoto created his character. Essentially, Madara's conception came from the desire of Kijimoto wanted to elaborate on the ending of Naruto. He wanted to create a character and art where the audience would be able to understand the detrimental aspects of war and the ideologies of the people involved in them. In an interview with Fuji TV, the creator of Naruto stated that in order to scale the power of characters such as Naruto and his team, in terms of wanting everyone in the series to become stronger, he needed to create a reason for this and thus introduce the Akatsuki, Madara being the one that would end up being their enemy. He wanted to make sure that the villains of Naruto were flamboyant and made sure every single enemy had reason for their actions. He wanted to design the enemies in a manner where viewers would be able to see them as anti-heroes. One of the key aspects he was looking for from Madara's character was to make sure he has a powerful aura. And I for one wouldn't deny Madara's aura at all. <laughs> The creator of Naruto decided that Madara would be one of the masterminds leading to the fourth shinobi world war and had kept it in mind that he wanted to build tension within readers, therefore wanted Madara to be an engaging antagonist who would clash with Sasuke Uchiha and the creature known as the Ten-Tailed Beast to lead up to the conclusion of the anime. Now around chapter 600, Kijimoto was interviewed once again regarding Madara Uchiha's character. He was asked by the person, the legendary shinobi is now immortal. Does Uchiha Madara have any weak point? Kijimoto responded by saying, all strong people have some kind of weak point, but Madara, he does not. How will the fight go on from here? He goes on to continue the interview in a manner to entice people to continue reading. But as we all know by now, these interviews, fans started to spread rumors that Madara was only killed off due to plot convenience, as Kijimoto had no idea how to kill Madara off in the story, and he made him a bit too overpowered. God damn right. Noah! <laughs> Larry, what the hell is it? Oh, Larry! Larry, you can't just... Oh, Larry! However, Kijimoto has said that Kage Otsutsuki was always planned and he decided this beforehand that he wanted the story of Naruto to end in this manner, where Black Zetsu would kill Madara to revive her. Madara Uchiha's character was specifically designed in Naruto to be the antithesis to Naruto's values. Kijimoto wanted to create a perfect anti-hero character. Madara was specifically designed by the creator of Naruto to be someone that would end up being defeated 
as he realized that even he saw that the talk no jutsu the most powerful jutsu in the whole of naruto it was just going on too many times i'm being serious i mean it even kijimoto was aware about the talk no jutsu trope that was happening he said on fuji tv with kobayashi that naruto always defeated his enemies without intending to kill them by settling disputes with words since his battle with pain right naruto truly forgave his enemies instead of having the protagonist kill them which kijimoto liked but no no shonen manga truly followed this ideal. Now the reason the talk no jutsu kept being used by Naruto was because Kijimoto liked the idea of two characters interacting and settling their differences and he saw that as a more interesting and challenging premise rather than just killing the characters. But after the pain battle he decided to introduce the resurrected Madara to have someone to be. That's why he introduced Edo Tensei Madara into the storyline but he found it very very complicated at first in how to deal with this jutsu and storyline. Kijimoto admits that it ended up with confusion about the difference between the two characters of Rene Rebirth Madara and Edo Tensei Madara since it was the same thing. And you know what? That makes me have so much more respect for Kijimoto because at least the dude admits his mistakes openly. Come on guys, doesn't honesty deserve some praise? No, I'm thinking of honesty. Please can you help me out by hitting that like button if you got to this part of the video? Maybe hit the notification bell and subscribe if you like my content. I post these sort of videos weekly and I would really really appreciate it. I mean come on if I haven't put you to sleep by now with all these facts and all this information then comment Madara Uchiha should have been Hokage below to let me know. Moving on now that I have explained Madara's initial concept and creation let me cover why Kijimoto designed him in a way that he talks and his attire. We all know by now Madara talks like a badass and his clothes have a lot of class. This was done on purpose for its representation. As we all know by now Kijimoto is fascinated with the ideas of some Samurai. This is the very reason his next manga is called Samurai 8. He even thought about making Kakashi a samurai at one point and even put them in the actual show. One of the inspirations for Naruto was a Blade of the Immortal by Samura as the manga had a huge impact on Kijimoto during university. Now going back to Madara of course, his favorite hobby is falconry. In Japanese falconry is called Takagari, a sport of noble class. It is a symbol of their nobility, status and warrior spirit. The Uchiha clan is one of the four noble clans of Konoha so this makes sense. Further proven by the fact that Madara and Hashirama wear samurai like attire during the war period. Now in real life during the Edo period falconry was seen to be a way of preparing a warrior for warfare and combat and as we all know by now Kijimoto set up Madara's character to be in an era of constant war and respecting the warrior spirit. That is one of Madara's ideals. He said to himself weakness disgusts me. He said that himself my man's such a Badass. But the creator of Naruto drew inspiration from the Bushido, the way of the warriors. The Bushido was the samurai code of honor. It established how you treated your enemies death over cowardice and even the types of weapons that were allowed in battle. Madara definitely embodies this as it is reflected when Guy fights him. Therefore Kishimoto wanted to design a character like Madara which would represent these code of ethics and made him talk in a manner that was noble from the Uchiha clan. For example he even made Madara's favorite quote to be armored sleeve single hit meaning that he loved to destroy his opponents in one blow. Following the samurai code gives us some more context in the Guy vs Madara fight because if you recall Guy moves so fast that Madara is stuck at first and is getting hit with air pressure punches until Guy actually lands a physical single punch on him. Madara then praises Guy as the strongest taijutsu ever and this is something not to be taken lightly from like a guy like him because he's embodying his favorite quote and his Bushido. Moving on again, okay let's talk about Madara's most famous scene. Just by saying that I think 90% of you already know what I'm talking about. Have you guessed? I'll give you two seconds. Of course you have! This scene, this has to be one of the best scenes of all time within the Naruto franchise. This particular episode was directed by Yamashita Hiroyuki and guess what? It was the first ever time he was an episode director. He directed Madara vs Shinobi Alliance which is crazy. The funny thing is he also wanted to work on Madara vs Guy but never got the chance since he was working on Boruto the movie at the time. One of the reasons why the Madara vs Shinobi Alliance scene came out so great is because Yamashita was inspired 
inspired by the Leavers Garify during high school. He had watched it in high school and wanted to replicate the same aspects that left him in awe as a kid. He loved the combined elements of taijutsu and framing scenes in a manner that gave an awe of greatness. That fight is what caused him to become an animator in the first place. Yamashita states that when he is directing, he even considers what music would work great and where to place it within a scene for greater impact. This is why I think Madara Fight and Kakashi vs Obita which he also directed, they seem much better than I thought. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, was this one of the top 5 best scenes in Naruto? Now for this part of the video, I'm going to answer many Madara Uchiha questions that the fanbase tend to have regarding him that have left them confused. The first one is, why could Madara use Sasano even though he had no eyes at the time? Is this a plot hole? Yes or no? Well, the logical conclusion is that after someone uses Sasano, they can use it again without the Mongeku Sharingan. The manga never explicitly stated that Sasano required the usage of Mongeku Sharingan. However, it does say that Sasano is the third technique MS uses obtain when they get the eyes. Sasuke said this himself. Even Itachi in chapter 578 against Kabuto where we can clearly see his Sasano active without his eyes being the Mangaku Sharingan. This even aligns with the mythology of what the Jutsus are based on. Now as I explained in my 5 things you didn't know about Kakashi video, go check that out if you haven't. The mythology goes like this. Amaterasu was born when Izanagi washed out his left eye. Tsukiyomi was born from washing off his right eye and Sasano was washing from the nose. This is why Susano doesn't require eyesight because it's following the mythology I think. Sharagon is a Rue, a gene residing in the body so it must be the genes that are activating when you get the Mogaku Sharingan that unlocks the ability. I don't think Kakashi can use Susano anymore in Boruto for this reason. This is how the writers would explain to us why Kakashi can't use Susano in Boruto although Obito gave him his two eyes. Okay now another question fans are wondering is how old was Madara actually when he died for the first time after faking his death? So by my calculations, when Madara Uchiha officially died after giving Obito his mission, he must have been at least 80 to 90 years old or some sources even say 120. I can go into details you know about how I came about this number but that would take me around 4 minutes and I don't want to bore you guys to death on the history of like small little details that I've already explained. If you really are curious how I got to this number, please watch our Naruto to war series playlist where I explain the first, second and third shinobi wars which took place to get an understanding of everything. Now lastly, another question about Madara that always pops up, why was he able to summon the outer path of Gido statue when it was sealed in the moon by Hagoroma and Hamura Utsuski? Hamura Utsuski said the clan will protect this statue on the moon and look over earth as protection from there. Madara Uchiha awakened the Rengan and this allowed him to break the seal and summon the statue down to earth where it was used as a container for the tail beast captured by the Akatsuki. So what the hell was happening when they were watching the earth and they held this statue themselves? Were, were they smoking some good shit while they, like, were they watching TV? You know, th why did they just let Madara do what he wants? Well as you know from Naruto the last movie to fix this plot hole, Basically, the Otsutsuki clan were having a civil war on the moon. In fact, a lot of them died out completely. Tonori was left and then he created his plan to go balls deep into Hinata and get that 10th Sengon, you know what I'm saying. So when Madara summoned the Gido statue for himself and wanted to do the infinite Tsukiyomi, Hamura Utsutsuki or his clan members, they were no longer around to protect the system. Therefore, the events of Naruto still make sense. So one last question is, was Madara married or have a girlfriend? Probably not. There is absolutely zero hints that this guy went balls deep into anyone or had any interest in any women. The manga even insinuates the idea that he thinks women are weaker than men in times of war. For example, the way he spoke to Tsunade regarding her healing jutsu in comparison to Hashirama and the way he talked about her, Tsunade even acknowledges the fact that she is just a mere woman. Now the reason Madara holds these values is because you have to remember this man was brought up in a time where children were sent to war to their deaths. Madara did not think women were useless or anything but he just imagined their roles to be different according to what the culture was at the time. For example, the women were usually medics or simply mothers, meant to birth many 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 children so that the clan would have more warriors to go and fight in the war and die. Now if you can remember, 
Throughout the Naruto series in that time, the most highly regarded woman of Madara's time was Mito Uzumaki. Hashirama married Mito Uzumaki because she was the heiress of the Uzumaki clan and the first Jinchuriki of the QB as she held special chakra. No other woman was held in high regard during these times. So Madara probably busted some kind of nuts, went ski 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 into random people, but I don't think he ever settled down because he had a chip on his shoulder at the time and he wanted to complete his philosophy. Now it's time for bonus facts on Mother Uchiha for you lovely individuals that got to this point of the video. Thanks for supporting me man, honestly. So basically, let's talk about Madara's famous weapon, the Gunbai, right? So this was passed down previous Uchiha generations and it's used to deflect attacks by turning the incoming chakra into wind nature. Well, this Gunbai Uchiha is based on the Japanese war fan in real life, which was used for the samurai class of feudal Japan and nobility. The Gunbai were large solid open fans that could be solid iron, metal with the wooden core, which were carried by high ranking officers. That's why someone like Madara would have it. The deeper history, I've already covered it in my hidden meaning on my five things you didn't know about obita video and I, I know i'm sorry i keep referring to other videos but i've done so many naruto videos on this channel i've explained everything so go check that one out now another bonus fact is that madara's build up took seven years yeah you heard me first time madara uchiha is even mentioned is in part one of naruto in the valley of the end where sasuke is standing over madara and naruto over hashirama now this happens in Naruto part 1 chapter 232. He is mentioned throughout the series by various characters like Tsunade and obviously Obito posing as him but he is not seen again until 2011 since chapter 232 wasn't released until 2004. I mean talk about character build up. I mean imagine being an anime only you saw Madara for, for the first time. You must have gone crazy. But anyway everyone that's the end of the video. I hope I put you to sleep let me know in the comments section below that you're not asleep follow me on twitter or instagram if you can please i'd appreciate that and remember i've covered all the other naruto characters so check out the playlist i'll see you guys next time to go balls deep